Welcome everybody to Tulsa City County Library's Virtual Renaissance Fair for our summer of 2020 summer reading program. I am Miss Tori from the Glenpool Library and joining me this evening is a very important guest, uh, Queen Elizabeth I of England. <laughs> Your Majesty, welcome. Thank you so very much. It's so wonderful to be here. So I don't often get to meet royalty in my line of work. Oh, what's that like? Oh, it's very busy. I have a great many duties that keep me occupied all the time. You wouldn't believe how many different laws have to be passed, disputes have to be settled. The Spanish keep trying to take us to war, which that is a headache all on its own. But beyond that, some of my very favorite things to do are to read. I can actually read in seven different languages. So it's very, very exciting to get to be involved with the library, a very extensive library at Whitehall Palace. And uh, it's one of my favorite places to relax and escape the duties of the kingdom, as there are a great many. It is one of the few places that I can hide from most of my advisors. <laughs> oh, I love it. Seven languages. I didn't know that about you. Um, I can read in Hebrew, Greek, Italian, German, English, obviously, French, uh, oh, and Spanish. Wow, <laughs> very impressive. Yes, my father did make certain that I was very well schooled, if nothing else. I wasn't really meant to be the queen, but I was absolutely intended to be a very prized wife for someone one day. Now, uh, now that I'm the queen, and though I don't necessarily have to choose a husband, I'm quite happy about that. There's a lot of pressure for you to do that though, right? Absolutely. I've got suitors coming all the time trying to get me to marry them. Um, King Philip of Spain, uh, who was married to my sister, so that's a little strange. And then uh, th there's King Charles of Austria. He's quite nice and a Protestant, so we like him. Um, also uh, King Henri of France uh, and, uh, oh, well, you know, I do have a cousin to the north. She's trying to get me to marry one of the Dukes. Uh, the Duke of Argyle, I believe is his name, from Scotland. So it, it seems my life is always a swirl with somebody coming to visit. Tell us about your palace. Like, uh, where is it exactly that you live? So, I have a number of palaces. I'm quite, like, quite lucky in that. My father was quite the entertainer. King Henry VIII, he's the one with the song about him. I so, heard of him. Yes, he, uh, he was absolutely obsessed with uh, all things entertainment. So, we have Nunsuch in Whitehall, we have Hampton Court Palace, uh, the Tower of London, obviously. Uh, there are several manor homes out with, through the palace. To the, the lands of England. We have Burley House, um, we have Hatfield House, that's where I grew up. So there's a, quite a number of them. At the moment I'm ensconced in Whitehall. So Whitehall is at the northern edge of London, on the Thames River still, so we can boat in to uh, see the, the goings-on or to take in a, a play at the Globe Theatre or at the Rose and Crown. And so those are all marvellous things. William Shakespeare is one of my absolute favorites. His writings uh, speak to me so much. I do love when he has a good comedy going. He's just finished writing Midsummer's Night's Dream and I think he might be taking a jape from my courtiers in that one but I do love it nonetheless. So Shakespeare, wow, he's one of my favorite authors too. Um, big fan of Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh now Faustus has just come out as well. That's written by Kit Marlowe. Now, Kit Marlowe and Master Shakespeare, they are at odds with one another quite often, but both wonderful gentlemen and excellent playwrights. Mr. Marlowe is very serious about things. I feel like Master Shakespeare has a little more lively manner about him. So, Your Majesty, what's a typical day look like for you? Ah, well, if I'm quite lucky, I get to sleep in. Uh, which you would think that as the Queen I would get to make those decisions all on my own, but uh, I very rarely get to. Again, with those advisors I'm always hiding from. But I get up and rise around Matanz. Now Matanz is the first of our daily prayer sessions. So my ladies of court help me to rise and get dressed and I'm off to prayers. Now, little did you know that in my time 
We go to prayers up to five times every single day. So that is a good way to keep track of your schedule. So we're up in the morning, we're off to morning prayers. Once that is done and we've received our communion for the day, we're off to breakfast. Now, breakfast is one of my favorites because I don't have to share it with all the other courtiers. It's just me and some time to reflect in the morning. And I love that. Things can get a little hectic around the palace. Then we are to play balls or to uh, play croquet on the lawn, uh, if the weather is nice, as it is now. So a little croquet in the morning or a walk in the stroll through the park. Uh, then uh, we've got lunch and after lunch is our midday mass. Uh, once midday mass is through, it's all advisors all the time. Or we must be off to Parliament to see what is happening in the House of Lords and uh, ensure that uh, the laws that we want to be passed are being passed in the realm. Uh, then we have uh, evening vespers. Uh, once vespers are done, then the party can begin. I love to dance. And because I do so love to dance, we have three or four times a week a very good ball going in the ballroom. Not as large as one might think. It may have only 30 or 40 courtiers, but it's a wonderful way to relax and pass the evening among my ladies and the gentlemen of court before we're off to bed for the evening. Well, that is a full day. That's a lot going on. Now, uh, I hear that uh, you yourself were very accepting of other religions. I am a Protestant princess, but I've lived through many different troubles with religion. Um, my father obviously split from the Catholic Church. Um, my brother, um, who succeeded him, was also Protestant. But then my sister, you may have heard of her, mm, they frequently call her Bloody Queen Mary. She brought Catholicism back to England and with it, the Spanish Inquisition, and that was a darker time for England. So I chose to be more accepting of religious pursuits. I figure if we're all praying to God, why does it matter how we get there? And really, it's better for our individual people. They're able to express that love and joy, how it is in their hearts, and not because we choose to dictate that to them. Now, because of those choices, the Pope and the Vatican and all the people of the Catholic nations don't like me very much. And I've actually um, lived through multiple assassination attempts for just that reason. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You have some really uh, elite bodyguards or a secret I'm service. Very lucky, I do. Um, I have the yeoman bodyguard of the tower. Um, you've probably seen them before. Uh, there are two different branches of those, those yeoman bodyguards. One uh, wears all bright red um, and they actually guard all of my properties. Um, so they are, they are yeoman warders and they care for all my properties. And then the yeoman of the bodyguard do wear all black and it is their entire job to make certain that I'm very well protected. Wow. So it sounds like you have a fascinating life. I appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy day to talk to us here at the library. Absolutely. Uh, uh, boys and girls, I am going to wave my magic wand and Queen Elizabeth is going to step back for a minute. We're going to have a couple of questions for Chris Ryan, the actress who plays Queen Elizabeth at the Oklahoma Renaissance Fair. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Didn't tell you I was doing this. But, That's um, all right. <laughs> would you like to ask a couple of questions of the actors who uh, yeah, play our queen? Um, first, how long have you been portraying our queen? Six years now. Um, Six I years. played, yeah, I did one year um, as Princess Elizabeth, uh, just as a transition from our former monarchs to, into a, what, what we play currently. Um, and so this is my, this is my sixth, sixth year to play this character. Right, because we had King Henry for a number of years uh, before that actor retired. Yes. Um, and so what did you do before you became Princess Elizabeth? I played a number of characters, actually. Um, I have played a, uh, the head of a gypsy compania or a, a traveling group of, of people. Um, her name was Farasha. Um, she had a Romani accent, lots of bright colors. Um, I played a character named Catriona, who was an adventuress. Um, she was always getting her husband into trouble by um, being very bold and brave and daring. Um, and then uh, for a number of years, I actually played the Madam of the Brothel named Pandora. Um, so 
that was a big shift, obviously, from that character to this character, but the audience has been very accepting. That's very nice. Great. How much research did you have to do before you took up this part? Um, luckily, I am a big, huge history nerd, um, a giant history nerd, um, and specifically Tudor and Elizabethan history is one of my favorites. Um, so I was very lucky because I came well armed <laughs> with knowledge when the time came. Um, I have read probably in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 books specifically about Elizabeth's court and how it worked. Um, there's a lot about Elizabeth and most people know the big broad details of her and her life. Um, but I wanted to know more about who she was as a, a symbol to the nation, because uh, she was very careful about guarding things like her portrait. Um, if you ever go and look at pictures of, of Queen Elizabeth all through her life, they start to look very similar as she gets older. Uh, and that's because she didn't want people to think that she was aging or ailing in health. In the nation itself, she wanted them to really know that she was strong. Uh, and that she wasn't going to let them down and that she was going to lead them for a long time because there have been so many people who were king or queen in between her father and her she really wanted to make sure that that was well taken care of so i wanted to understand more about that so we did do a lot of research when it came to the court and the world itself um, there's some great books out there there's one that's called uh, the dangerous times of elizabethan england and that's all about the world itself. It's about how in Elizabeth in England was, and um, it's neat. There's another one called Time Traveler's Guide to Elizabeth in England that um, are fabulous, because it's just like, if you were gonna go and time travel to that time period, what would you need to know? So they're, they're fabulous reads. Sounds great. Uh, so how many years have you been involved in the Oklahoma Renaissance Fair? My first season at Oklahoma Renaissance Festival was 1998. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. um, my, we did a, a, what's called the Boar's Head Feast, which happens in the fall, which was in 1997. So it was my first event with the festival itself, but to do a full festival was 1998. Um, so I've had some time to play all those different characters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my last question for you, Chris, uh, if there were any kids out there who were interested in getting involved in acting, where would you advise that they begin? Oh, so many good questions for acting. Um, honestly, I think that there's some great opportunities with most of the local community theaters. Um, they are year round looking for people for some really neat, unique roles. Um, and the only person who can play a child is a child. Um, there's an innocence, there's that joy, there's that um, spark. Um, and so there's some great opportunities. Uh, I know that there is Little Theater, there's Tulsa Community Theater. Um, there are several opportunities in that area. Um, unfortunately, you can't work at the Renaissance Festival until you're older. Um, otherwise, we would love to have everybody out. Um, but uh, definitely, we, we advise, you know, Muskogee Little Theater, there's a ton of them. Um, and those opportunities uh, through like the Civic Center or, um, the Tulsa community groups uh, are really neat. It's a, it's a cool opportunity to explore what is it like to be somebody totally different and, you know, kind of play with identity a little bit and that's a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for talking with us today. Uh, boys and girls, remember you still have time to sign up for our summer reading program. If you were interested in historical characters like Queen Elizabeth or Shakespeare or any of the other characters we talked about, uh, we've got some fabulous research databases that are free with your library card. Just visit TulsaLibrary.org forward slash research forward slash databases. There's one for biographies. We've got encyclopedia online, lots of places you can go to learn these historical facts that can make you a better actor in the future if that's something that you're interested in. So thank you again, Chris, for talking with us. Thanks for good Queen Bess, and uh, everyone have a good night. Thank you.